Greetings, YouTubers. So, you wanted to become a game programmer? Well, you sure have come to the right place. This tutorial is the beginning of many more to come which will teach you guys the foundations of computer programming. The aim of this particular tutorial is to provide you with a foundation of computer systems as they relate to computer programming. I will introduce to you the following concepts. What is a computer program? What is a computer system and what are the main components that you will be working with while programming? What is the program development cycle? What is an IDE or integrated development environment? What are some of the many languages of the computer program? And finally we will cover what you should do next if you are still interested in becoming a game programmer. Are you ready to learn? Great! And come with me on a journey into the catacombs of the computer, computer programming. programming. What is a computer program? I think the first question you should ask yourself when thinking of the answer to the previous question is what is your problem? No, I'm not trying to pick a fight with you already. I'm simply trying to get you to think like a programmer. Programmers solve problems with the programs that they write. All a program is, in essence, is a set of written instructions telling the computer how to solve a particular problem. These problems can vary from the mundane tribulations of massive amounts of data needing to be managed in a logical way, to the creative solutions to the problem of human boredom as manifested in video game creation. Any way you look at it, the basis remains the same in that when you create a piece of software, you are indeed solving a computational problem of some sort. I cannot stress the importance enough of knowing your problem. You must know the very fine details of your problem in order to understand how to solve the problem with efficiency and with a cunning aptitude. We as programmers must know our problem inside and out before attempting to code anything. At the heart of any computer program, there is three basic functions which a program implements to solve a particular problem. These functions are input, processing, and output. Let's look at each of these in turn. Input is any kind of data being fed into the computer. This input can come from a multitude of hardware, many of which you are probably already familiar with, including a keyboard, a mouse, and even a microphone. Input is not limited to just these devices, however. Your hard drive or your temporary memory storage, such as RAM or random access memory, can also become input for a program. Consider a word processor when you open a saved document. The program takes the saved document as input. It processes the information stored in the file, implementing formatting codes such as bold font and line spacing and outputs the information to the screen. Processing, in essence, is the manipulation of data done behind the scenes of the program. Seldom do you see the inner workings of the processing which computers, computer programs do, simply because normal end users are not interested in these inner workings. They simply want to type their document, apply formatting, and save to access their documents at a later time. The same is true for a game. No normal, normal as in a non-programmer, gamer cares to see the matrix multiplication and raw numbers being crunched in their favorite 3D shooter game. They simply want to experience the game, playing it as a solution to their problem of boredom. They are concerned with input and output. If I hit button X, then the output on the screen shows me that I've blown the bad guy to smithereens. Output is information being presented to the user and is commonly understood to come from a small number of hardware devices such as the monitor and speakers. In cell phones there is also the output of vibrations which let the user know some event has occurred. Such output is known as haptic feedback. Output is not limited to monitors, speakers, and haptic feedback however. It can also take the shape of a saved file on your computer. Such is common with saved game files where pertinent information about your game 
such as your health, location, weapon status, inventory contents, and experience levels are output to a file saved on your hard drive to be accessed as input when you load your saved game in the future. A computer system is comprised of all the physical and non-physical components which make a computer useful. They all work together to do one main thing, to provide useful and meaningful information to the user. This holds true with word processing programs as well as the exciting world of video games. All a game is, in actuality, is a bunch of information being presented in a useful way. We have covered the hardware aspect in the previous slide and have learned that it consists of the physical input and output devices which serve to manipulate data. It is also true of the processing aspect of a computer program that hardware, namely the CPU, handles the processing operations. Software is the intermediary between either two pieces of hardware or between hardware and a human being. For example, TCP IP protocols serve as the conduit between two routers communications enabling your computer to communicate with the server which stores this video at YouTube. The operating system you are using serves as the intermediary between the vast processing power of your CPU and yourself. Without it, you would have to know machine code to be able to use your computer which is a very complicated language of zeros and ones. Software is generally thought of as being either application software or system software. Games are considered to be application software, as is word processing programs such as Microsoft Word. System software, on the other hand, includes operating systems which run on computers. We will be concentrating on application software in these tutorials. Professional programmers do not just jump in and start to code a project they may have. This practice is known as cowboy coding. The programmer generally spends many hours planning a program and then implements what's known as the program development cycle. You should begin to familiarize yourself with the steps shown on this slide as it will help you to get into good commercial grade programming habits. Take a moment to pause the video and review the following information on integrated development environments. Now that you are familiar with the way which an IDE works, let me show you my version of Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, which is what we will be using in subsequent tutorials when we dive into the language of C++. This is where the magic happens, folks. I just wanted to give you an idea of what an IDE looks like. As you can see, it's not much different than your standard word editing program. We will delve into this much more in later tutorials. The many, many languages of computer programming can be overwhelming to some. Do not be afraid. You do not have to know all of them to become a supercomputer programmer. Just like a human can be successful speaking one language, you too can become successful knowing just one programming language. C++ is a powerful language and is considered the industry standard when it comes to game production. We will be learning this language in subsequent tutorials, but for now, in this basic tutorial, we will be looking at only the logic behind the problem-solving structures which virtually all computer languages share. For now, you should just familiarize yourself with C++ concepts to prepare you for your game production career. Once you have learned a new language, subsequent languages you may choose to delve into will become much easier to learn, so don't worry and don't get too overwhelmed by all the possibilities out there for development in other languages. Give yourselves a pat on the back, as I am very proud of you for finishing this tutorial. You have just taken the first step to starting a career in making A-plus video games. Here 
I present to you a short list of things which will help you to better understand the concepts presented in this tutorial and to prepare you for subsequent tutorials. If you are serious about learning the basics of computer programming and further developing your curiosity into a viable money-making option for your future, take an hour of your time and complete the exercises presented to you in this slide. Congratulations for making it to the end and happy learning. Thanks for viewing the first part of this tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe.